Welcome back, everybody, to Three Point Lines here on The Parlay. I'm your host, Luca Rosano, alongside my co-host, Jelani Reed, And we are back on this Monday. We got a couple matchups to break down and give you our picks against the spread. Overall, I'm hitting 55% of my picks. As Jelani's going to fill in for Noor today, let's see if you can uh, do better than Noor. Noor's been on a roll, too. I think she's hitting about 54% of her picks. So Jelani's got to pick up the slack here. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, let's see how it goes. We have a good slate tonight. Um, some nice games. So let's get right to it. Yeah, let's dive right into it. And we're going to have the Clippers and Indiana Pacers. The Pacers are two and a half point favorites here. Who do you like in this one? Um, for me, I'm going with the Clippers tonight. I think that when you're looking at the Clippers, they've won, um, you know, a, a recent game uh, where Batum was very reliable. He had 32 points scoring. We'll see how he does tonight. But, um, you know, Jackson as well, right? Reggie Jackson, he's been a good player for them in the absence of, you know, Kawhi and Paul George on the year. So we'll see if those guys can step up. Uh, they've won five straight against the Indiana Pacers. So I could also see that happening tonight. And uh, as for the spread picks, they are five and one against the spread in their last six road games. So they have been reliable in that spot. When I'm looking at Indiana, there's just a lot of issues that I'm seeing with the Pacers this season. I thought that they would actually, you know, be better than what the record says they are. They're 17-32 on the year. They haven't been healthy um, at times. And also, you know, you're just looking at the the rotation players, right? You're seeing, um, you know, all these guys out um, as of late, like Brogdon, like Turner, uh, TJ McConnell, all these guys that are obviously important to the Pacers, not there, TJ Warren even. So when I'm looking at that and, you know, just the, the fact that they haven't been playing all too well, um, they, they've had five losses by an average of 14. That's their last five losses, an average of 14 points. So I'm going to put it with the, the LA Clippers tonight, and I expect to see a nice night from Reggie Jackson. Yeah, I agree with you. My first initial thought for this one was, uh, how are the Clippers even underdogs in the spot? I mean, they have been the comeback kings. They have played uh, good teams pretty tight. I mean, on Friday, they cashed in. Again, they covered the spread against Miami, and that was a game late in the fourth quarter. Indiana shouldn't be favored right now. This is a team that we know it's only a matter of time until they blow things up. Like you said, a lot of guys in and out of the lineup, a lot of issues, Miles Turner, Brogdon, etc. Sabonis. I don't know if he's happy there anymore. No. He's just the only guy that seems to be contributing for this team. And the Clippers have been on a very long road trip, but hey, they're they're four and three. They're finding ways to win these games, keeping these games close. And I could see them having a a victory here tonight. Reggie Jackson, you touched on him. He's been having an amazing season, I think, despite the absences of uh, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. But Toom's been that X factor. Even Zubats down low has been giving yeah, this team yeah. some solid contribution. So I really like this pick, Jelani. I think the Clippers can uh, go into Indy and win this game outright. They're not dead in the water. I mean, the Clippers right now have a better record, I believe, than the Lakers. Who would have thought that, yeah. considering Kawhi and George have been out for most of the season? Yeah, yeah, no. We'll see what happens tonight with the Clippers. But now let's move to the Memphis Grizzlies playing the Philadelphia 76ers tonight. Sixers, two-point favorites here. It's a pretty nice matchup. Yeah, it is. I've been going back and forth on this one a ton. You, uh, you got Sixers, Grizzlies, 7th and 8th, respectively, uh, in net rating. So these yeah. two teams, they know how to win games. They're very good on both ends of the floor. I'm actually going to give the edge, though, to Memphis, as they've been an outstanding road team this season. Philadelphia, we think they're a really good home team, but they have not typically been a good home team against the spread. 9-14 and 14 against the spread at home. Mm -hmm. I really like how the Grizzlies are playing right now. They have been one of my safest bets in the NBA. I keep picking on these guys. They are not proving me wrong. So I'm going to ride with them until they do just that. I, I like this matchup for John Moran. I think he's going to get his. Uh, can the Grizzlies try to slow down and be? That's going to be the biggest question going into this one. But yeah, this is going to be a great battle back and forth. Would not be surprised if this goes down to the wire in the fourth. But I'm going to go with the hot team here. I'm going to go with the Grizzlies who uh, continue to get it done on the road. For me, I'm going with the Grizzlies as well. So we're two on two uh, so far agreeing. But yeah, you mentioned how reliable the uh, Memphis Grizzlies have been right now. And they are because the last 17 road games, 14 and three against the spread. They're 16 and eight overall on the road this year. And let's look at, you know, this stretch. They've won 16 of their last 19 games, seven and three in their last 10. They're balling right now. And let's let's face it, okay, John Morant, that guy is just sensational. I expect a big night from my guy tonight. So I'm going to lean 
that way. When you're looking at Philadelphia, right, they, they have been playing some good basketball. Of course, Joel Embiid has to be the MVP right now. You could say uh, just what he's done. He's averaged 34 and a half points per game. And he needs the fun fact. He needs 24 points uh, tonight against the Grizzlies in order to join Wilt. Allen Iverson and Hal Greer as the only Sixers players to score 500 points in a calendar month. So he's wow. he's definitely putting the ball in the bucket. But tonight, I'm just I'm looking at the Memphis Grizzlies. I think their pace, their style on the court. I think it could you know outdo the Philadelphia 76ers tonight just with their speed. Um, and so overall, I'm going to go with the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. And also the Sixers, they haven't been that good at home this year. They're 13 and 10 overall at home. So I, I, I look at the Grizzlies being a good team on the road, being a good team overall, um, and just managing to win games against good teams throughout the course of this season. I think a lot of people look at the Grizzlies saying maybe they're a year too early in terms of how they're, you know, appearing to be a contender in the Western Conference. So, yeah, give me Memphis. Yeah, hard to bet against them right now. Next game, we got the Pelicans taking on the Cavs. Speaking of teams hard to bet against right now, the Cavaliers, they have been – a surprise story in the East. Yeah, I'm going with them tonight. I'm going with the Cavs. They're 15 and nine at home. So they're playing, you know, some good basketball at home. They almost won five straight games. Had they not, not blown their lead uh, in the fourth quarter against Detroit the other night. But, you know, when I'm looking at this game, new Orleans is just so beat up. Right. And, and they may not have the, the questionable guys out there. You have Ingram who's questionable with the ankle. You have Valanchunas, who he's dealing with the non-COVID illness as of late. So if those two guys aren't out there, then I got to go with Cleveland because when they're when New Orleans' two best scorers aren't out there, they don't win games. 2-11 and 11 when Ingram doesn't play. And when JV doesn't play, they're 1-5. and five. So we're going to have to see the, the injury report and see if they're going to be out there tonight. If they are, that gives them a better chance. But if they're not, then who's going to step up offensively for the Pelicans, I don't really know because you're also playing a team in Cleveland who's top three in defense. And when you're talking about the paint, that's why it's so important that uh, Valanchunas has to be out there because if he's not, you're playing a team in the Cavaliers who was top 12 in points in the paint this season. They managed to score uh, when, it, when it matters most in the paint. So if Valanchunas is not there, it's going to be a tough and long night for New Orleans who has lost three straight and five of the last seven games. I got to put more trust and faith in the in the Cavaliers tonight offensively, uh, especially just because all those guys out uh, or possibly out for, for the Pelicans. And also the Pelicans, like I mentioned, not good offensively, 25th in offensive rating. Yeah, it's not going to go, go well for the, the Pelicans tonight. I got the Cavaliers too. You talk about the Pelicans struggling to score the basketball. The Cavs defense has been instrumental during their impressive season thus far. They've won eight of the last 10 and they have held their opponents to 102 points or less in half of those outings. So their defense has been their calling card. You look at the Pelicans, they dropped three in a row, like you mentioned, all by double digits. And they're two and five against the spread in their last seven contests and eight and three against the spread as a road dog this season. They're going to be on the road here. That's going to be a tough spot for them. Yeah. And then Cleveland, I want to point out here, they have been a really good bet, especially at home, 15, eight and one against the spread. And they are four, three and two on the second night of a back to back. So we got the, uh, the eye test telling us to take Cleveland. We got the numbers and the stats back in us up and the, uh, you know, the betting trends. So, it's going to be the Cavaliers tonight. I really think they're going to win this game by double digits, and they should take care of business against the Pelicans. Okay, and now let's move to the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. Always a nice matchup when these two teams play. Four, four points is uh, currently uh, towards Boston. So do you take that, or are you going with uh, Miami? Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, the Heat are number one. The Celtics are not even in the playoff spot. I'm really surprised right. they're getting the advantage here. This could be a trap game. That was the first thing that crossed my mind when I looked at this. I'm going to go with the Heat. I hope it's not a trap game. I'm going to go with the, I guess, obvious pick here. Just take the points with the number one seed. But you look at the Heat, regardless of Lowry's absence. And by the way, I hope everything's okay with Lowry. He's been yeah. missing a ton of time due to personal matters. I don't even think he's going to go against the Raptors tomorrow with the way things are looking. But despite his absence, uh, the Heat have been uh, a really good bet against the spread, and the Celtics have only uh, gone 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10. 
and the Heat are 13 and three against the spread in their last 16 games as an underdog. So you are giving one of the best teams in the East points here against a Celtics team that has been the definition of inconsistency. You yes. never know which version of this team you're going to get. I'm going to go with Miami. I know they played a marathon of a game against the Raptors on Saturday. Fatigue could be an issue. I know they did have the off night, but you still got guys like Tyler Hero. Duncan Robinson should be able to bounce back in this one. Jimmy Butler coming off a nice game. Got Bam Adebayo out there. Larry's not there, but this Heat team, generally healthy. I think they're going to they're gonna do it tonight against the Celtics, so give me the points. I'm going with the Boston Celtics. And why? Well, it just came in that Butler and Tucker are not going to play tonight. So, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Boston Celtics here. Um, despite the fact that the Heat have actually been good against Boston, nine and two against the spread in their last 11 against the Celtics. But Boston, they're finally, I think they're finding their form. I can't really say finally because, like you mentioned, they're so inconsistent. But at least it's Tatum and Brown. They're, they're finding ways to score points. They're finding ways to contribute as we expect them to on the floor. Boston, W's in eight of their last 12, right? So they're playing some good basketball as of late. Uh, we expected them to really be in the mix um, at this point. But if it starts now, that's that's good. So I'm looking at them. Um, and the Heat, again, they're just – there are a, a lot of guys that are out. Lowry, Yurtsevin, you have – Butler, like I mentioned now, and Morris as well. So there's some key guys that are out. I do like their depth. Uh, I've spoken about it before, but, you know, just with without Butler and Tucker, that does make a huge difference. And and we're looking at the game they had against Toronto the other night. I mean, triple overtime? <laughs> I mean, the, the legs crazy. are still there. You know, they're tired. They're, they're dealing with all these, these road trips and stuff like that. And when you're coming off, of a three overtime night. I mean, it's going to be tough uh, just to see how you you play tonight. So I think the momentum goes for or goes toward the Boston Celtics tonight. So give me give me Boston. Yeah, let this be a lesson learned to betters everywhere. Always check the news in the <laughs> NBA. You never know when guys are going to be ruled out. That Butler news and Tucker news literally dropped huge. like 27 minutes ago, and that's huge. So yeah. shout out to Jelani for uh, covering that because that totally went over my head. Am I going to back down from the pick? No, I won't be cheap like that. I'll still ride with the Heat and hope they nice. can get it done despite those two big players being out. But th that's going to be uh, two big losses for the Heat. All right, we got uh, – Kings taking on the Knicks. Knicks, six and a half point favorites here. I'm going with uh, New York. Uh, I'm just looking at the fact that Sacramento, they haven't been playing good basketball. Losers of six straight. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the Knicks, they haven't been <laughs> that good as well. <laughs> Losing six of the last seven. But I'm seeing that the Kings are not a good road team. 6-17 and 17 on the road overall. And a lot of those have not hit the spread. So in terms of a bet, they aren't that team that you could really trust in this spot. And they are letting opponents score an average of almost 120 points in their last 10 games. Their defense is nowhere to be found right now. And tonight, Fox, he is questionable. We'll see if he does play. He's missed the last 11 days dealing with an ankle uh, and if he's not good to go expect for obviously Halliburton to have a nice night but you know the New York Knicks they are a better team at home uh, than than they may appear um, and, and when you're playing a team in Sacramento who just can't get it done on the road I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards the Knicks tonight and the Knicks they have been underdogs against good teams as of late like Cleveland like Milwaukee Miami and they've managed to put good results on the board they haven't always won all those games but they played strong they played tough they're playing an easier opponent tonight who ranks 29th in points allowed per game so the kings again when i'm looking at the defense i don't know if you're going to be able to to deal with new york i think we may see a big night from some of the role players in, in the bench um and, and as for the defense of the knicks i mean they're they're one of the better defensive units in the league shout out to thibodeau so yeah I, I don't see the kings getting this one done tonight especially because new york they've covered seven of their last nine at madison square garden they are a reliable bet at home yeah, they are. I'm going to go with the Kings here. I just don't trust the Knicks for whatever reason, laying this type of number with them. And I know the Kings have been brutal. They've lost uh, their last six games. Um, and they are going to be finishing up their road trip. Luckily for them at MSG, they've won two of three at MSG. So they got that going for them. I know Fox might miss this game. If he goes, they'll be huge. If not, though, I I've been liking the recent play of Halliburton. I think the Kings, 
you know, they can make this into a bit of a track meet. I think their offense will be able to keep the, themselves in this game. The Knicks have a tendency of sometimes overlooking their opponents and allowing their, their opponent to get back into a game. So I think this will be a close game. Um, Randall, I don't know what's going on with him right now. I mean, he's not a player you can trust, not looking like his old self whatsoever. And I feel like if Randall has an off night, that's going to open the door for the for the Kings to maybe make this a game. So the pressure is going to be on, uh, you know, Julius Randall um, and even uh, R.J. Barrett to try to have big games here. So uh, I do think it's going to be a close one. I still can see the Knicks winning, but six and a half, I'll go in favor of the Kings. I think they end their road trip with uh, a much better game than the ones they've had. All right, we'll see how they do against the fifth-ranked defense in the NBA. But now let's move to the Toronto Raptors and the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta is favored here. Yeah, uh, this might be a homer pick, but I'm going to go with the Raptors. I know the Hawks have won seven in a row, picking up some nice wins against some pretty good teams. But uh, I like this Raptors team right now. I really think that win on Saturday is going to do them a lot of good. I know the silver lining of that was the amount of minutes <laughs> logged by their five starters. Crazy. I'm in the shot clock era five starters all logging more than 50 plus minutes. So they're still going to be tired going into this one. But uh, I, I do like the Raptors. Uh, they are 10 and three straight up in their last 13 games against Atlanta. And I think that's going to, that went on Saturday. It proved to me that they can win these close games. And I think that's what this game's going to be. I think it's going to go down to the wire and uh, Atlanta, you go credit to them. They've been playing great basketball. I don't know what flip for them. It's like that win against the Bucks really turned their season around. And there's a lot of betting stats on them. I mean, they've won their last three meetings against the Raptors. And, uh, you know, they've they've beaten the teams that they have pretty decisively. And Trey Young's been going off. He's averaging 27.7 points, 9.3 assists, and 4.1 rebounds during this winning streak. But Raptors, being a slight dog, I, I got to take it. I just think they're going to find a way to get it done in Atlanta. I'm going with Atlanta tonight. I, I can't go with the Raptors. I would love to see them get it done. But yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the game they had the other night against Miami. Obviously, you're talking about, you know, fatigue uh, coming into this one. And they are still on the road trip. They are going to end the road trip with this one. But, you know, when you're just talking about the games, you know, the travel, the, the minutes logged, I'm going to go with Atlanta, who to me, they're, they're finding their form. Finally, uh, they were supposed to be the, look, they went to the conference finals last year, right? Yeah. So you would think that they'd have a better start or look at least like this, uh, you know, at the start of the year. Um, but yeah, they're trying to win their eighth straight game. They have, like you said, they have been playing well against Toronto in their past three games. They've won those three. And overall, in their past three games, in their schedule, the bench has been the name of the game. The Raptors bench was nowhere to be found in Miami. And tonight, you know, you're playing a Hawks bench that has outscored their opponents 160 to 60 in their last three games. So I'm looking at the bench. I think the bench is going to be the difference tonight for both teams. I, I expect for the Hawks bench to show up and we'll see if Toronto's bench does right. They have been pretty inconsistent on the year. So if they're, if they don't show up, if they don't have contributions from certain guys on the bench and from their reserve spot, I think that Atlanta should be the pick here. And yeah, Atlanta has been hot. You know, they're finding the rhythm. I got to go with them tonight against the Raptors. Yeah. I'm drinking that Toronto Kool-Aid after Saturday. It's, <laughs> we'll see if it bites me in the butt or not. We'll see. Um, next game. We got warriors and uh, rockets this is the biggest spread of the night. Warriors 10 and a half point favorites. Yeah, it's funny. Um, the last time I was on with you on three point lines, they did meet up and the spread, I think it was like 11 and a half or something like that. It was it was large. Right. And I went with Golden State. They did not cover. So I'm going to go with Houston this time. I think that it, it is it is a big number. And I understand. I mean, Houston, they haven't had a good year. They're they're very young at Golden State. You know who they are already. But, you know, I'm thinking of the fact that the Warriors, you know, they're one and four in their last five games against the spread. They haven't been the best team against the spread on the year, despite their record and what the record tells us. Um, and I think that, you know, the last two games, I understand Houston has allowed 
you know, points to get on the board in terms of opponent scoring. They've allowed, you know, their teams to beat them by 15 and 30 points in the last two. So I get that, but they are, you know, they have posted a winning record against the spread in their last five. So they have been playing well in terms of spread picks as of late being three and two. So that's obviously above 500. I am going to put my trust in them tonight. Let's hope that it works out for me. Um, and Golden State, I mean, they, they have been a better team. We know this. And Houston has had a tough time with the Warriors, you know, in terms of their recent matchups, right? But tonight, I think that the, the number is pretty big. And we've seen a lot of these teams that are underdogs and dogs by 10 plus or 10 to 15, they have managed to actually cover. So I'm going to go with Houston here. I know it's not a popular pick, but yeah, give me the Rockets tonight. Yeah, doing the show every day, I've realized something. A lot of these dogs have been covering and yeah. I'm going to go with the Rockets here too. The Warriors, I don't know what's going on with them. One in three against the spread in their last four. Stephen Curry has not been shooting the ball well. I mean, let's call it for what it is. He's been shooting bricks. I know it's still over 30% from three, but that's not good in, yeah. in Stephen Curry's books. We're used to seeing this guy go really off every single game. And uh, I look at this game, Jelani, Draymond Green going to be out. And I don't feel like this is getting enough attention where Green's absence really hurts this Warriors team, their spacing, their defense, just their overall ball movement. Draymond Green, he does all the little things. And I think when you look at this Warriors team, even in years past when KD was here, a lot of people were just mesmerized by the star power, the Currys of the world, the Tom Thompsons of the world, the Durants of the world. But Draymond Green's kind of that glue on yep. this team that keeps everything going, that keeps this team in check. And he can be their leader too on, on certain nights. So him being out is going to be a, another big thing for them to overcome. I look for Tate for the Rockets to have a big game as a disruptor. And uh, I think the Rockets will be able to keep this one close. I can still see the Warriors winning it, but I don't think there's going to be a blowout. The Rockets have shown that they can make these games interesting and they can play these teams tough. And like you said, last time you're on the show, they did exactly that and they covered the numbers. So I will go with the Rockets here who this time will be at home. Okay. And the final game tonight, we have the Portland Trailblazers uh, four point favorites against their division rival, the OKC Thunder. Yeah, the spread's only four. I'm going to lay it here. Uh, you look at the Blazers. They only have seven road wins all season, but five of their last seven um, games have been one away. F Sorry, they got their last five wins on the road in this in the span. So, uh, yeah, they have definitely gotten off to, uh, you know, they turned it around with their uh, road woes from earlier this season. Whereas the Thunder, they have not won at home since December 31st. So this Crazy. is... This has been a terrible team, and this is the team you want to play on the road to resurrect some of those woes from earlier this season. And they have a seven-game losing streak and six-game skid at home. On top of that, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Canadian kid, shout out to him. He's going to be out. So I really don't know what the Thunder have going for them in this one. You look at the Blazers. I know they have had a very rough season, up and down season, but they've been playing much better with old Damian Lillard. They're actually competing out there. And, you know, you got to credit – Guys stepping up, you know, McCollum, Simons, these guys have really put the team on their back and the spacing just seems a lot better. And I know the Blazers are set to be sellers at the deadline, but they've been proving a lot of people wrong during this time with Dame being out and they're 21 and 29 against the spread overall, but they're eight and four against the spread in their last 12. So this Blazers team, they're getting it going. They're figuring it, figuring it out. And who knows if they're going to stay past the trade deadline. There's a lot of speculation now that McCollum could be on the move, Norm could be on the move, et cetera. But as of right now, I do like them to beat OKC that is headed for another, uh, you know, lottery. And uh, yeah, with O'Shea, I don't give them much, much of a chance. I think there's going to be all Blazers tonight, so I will pay the price of four. Yeah, I got to agree with you there. I mean, OKC, like you said, they just haven't managed to win games. One and nine in the last 10. They've lost to seven in a row straight up. And you're looking at the fact that uh, December 31st, their last home win. So, yeah, they have struggled. And if they didn't beat Brooklyn recently, then that would have been their last win on New Year's Eve. So it's been a, a tough, tough stretch 
for the Thunder. But one thing, if you are going to bet for the Thunder, they are 30 and 17 against the spread. So that's pretty impressive given all that's gone on in OKC this year. But yeah, shout out to my fantasy team. Shea Gilgis Alexander is not there. So that's obviously going to be tough. He's still out. Uh, They are shorthanded in that spot. And with that being said, and with them being one and five against their division opponents uh, overall this season, I mean, you got to put it towards uh, Portland, excuse me. So yeah, Portland, I got them because they are five and one in their last six road games against the spread. And you mentioned it, something that I wanted to say, like, their, their key guys, you know, have been contributing. There, there's no Damian Lillard out there, but you are seeing a lot of nights where it's either Powell, you know, contributing, doing what he has to do on the floor. Or if it's not him, you obviously expect to see CJ McCollum do certain things out there. And, you know, Simon, Simons has been a revelation. I did a few years ago know that he, he was raw, but he'd end up being a guy that could definitely be a key piece to uh to a team as he gets older and as he gets more experienced so yeah we're gonna see probably him have a nice night and i know guys like uh larry nance are out uh nazir little all those guys are out zeller as well but like i mentioned i think those key guys that are out there on the floor have managed like you said to right the ship without damian lillard and tonight you know the thunder they're just not that type of team right now i don't know where the scoring is going to come from um so if you are looking at the over under go with the under uh yeah so give me give me the portland trailblazers tonight all right for the most part we agreed with some of these picks but we'll see how we do head to head and uh if you do put any bets on tonight good luck with your picks you never know what you're going to get in the nba i've learned that you just never know when you think a favorite's going to win, the underdog comes in and vice versa. But that is going to conclude three-point lines here on the parlay. Thank you so much, Jelani, for filling in for Noor. And good luck with your picks, everybody. We'll catch you all again in the next episode. Take care.